All right, problem 76, we have the graph of f, and we're asked which of the following values of x is f prime of x positive and increasing. Okay, so let's remember that the derivative of f or f prime of x will be positive when the function's increasing. So you can see the function's increasing like up to about here. And so like, again, if we were to draw a tangent line, you know, its slope will be positive. And it's also increasing like at the, uh, like on this point, or it's also, you know, positive at that point, at the end over at E. Now, um, that's when it's positive and that's when it's, and when we say increasing, we're basically saying that it's getting steeper and steeper as you're going to the right, as the X value is increasing. So on this region here, it is um, positive, but you can, if you were to draw a tangent line at the far left, this one would actually be more steep than the one over here. So they're all positive on this region, but it's not increasing. The derivative isn't increasing. It's actually decreasing because eventually it gets to zero and it becomes negative. So it's not going to be, it's not going to be B but it's actually gonna be E because E, it is positive, but you can see the graph gets more and more steep, meaning that the derivative is increasing. So the answer is E. All right, 77, let F be a function that is continuous on the closed interval two to four with F of two equal to 10 and F of four equal to 20, which of the following is guaranteed by the intermediate value theorem. Okay, so this is a theorem that you definitely want to um, memorize and practice because it's usually going to be um, part of the free response question on the exam. There's always multiple choice questions about it. And what it essentially says is that if you have a continuous function on some region or on some interval A to B, then if you know what the value at A is, so in this case, f of a or f of two, let's say a is two. We know that it's at 10. We know we have a point two comma 10. And at b, or it's, we'll say x is four, we have a point four comma 20 on the graph. And it's continuous. So if it's continuous on this interval, that means that to get from this point to this point, it has to pass between all the points between. Like it could do anything, it could do a bunch of crazy sort of, you know, you know, behavior and then like up and down, but it has to go between 10 and 20, like from this upper bound to this lower bound, it's gonna have to at some point be the values between 10 and 20. So, a it says f of x equals 13 for at least one solution open interval two to four. So yeah, it has to pass through 13 at some point. We're not, we don't know exactly which value. It could be, you know, a 2.1, it could be a three, 3.9. It doesn't matter. It just has to get passed through 13 at some point. It could actually pass through more than once. So actually, the answer is actually A. And that's, let me explain why it's not B. So it says f of three is 15. Now, f of three could be 15, but it, it, it's not that it has to be 15. f of three could also be, you know, something else, but 15 has to occur between two and four, um, but it's not, it's, it's just not b because it doesn't have to be 15 when x is three. So the answer will be a. Seventy-eight. the graph of y equals e to the tangent of x minus two crosses the x-axis at one point in, in the interval zero to one. What is the slope of the graph at this point? Okay, so let's, let's graph this with our calculator and let's find what the derivative value is at that point because the slope of the graph is, is, you know, is approximated by the you know, value of the derivative, which is the, you know, the, the slope of the tangent line at that point. So let me go to my graphing feature. Delete, delete, delete. Menu, graph, function, 
y equals e, the tangent of x minus 2. So that's all sorts of things, but we only care about from 0 to 1. So it's going to be so somewhere over here. So let's zoom in. And let's see what the zero is on this on this first region here. So we're gonna make our lower bound zero. And you can see that it intersects the x-axis at about 0 0.606. So let me just draw a sketch of what it's doing. No, don't get fooled. This is not the answer. This is just the zero of it. So what we want to essentially find is a slope of like a tangent line at this point. So we want to find the, the slope of the or value of the derivative at 0 0.606. Now you can plug this in your um, calculator function where you take where you find the exact value, or you can just kind of take a, there's usually an, uh, an option where you can just look straight and get an approximation of the derivative at that point. It won't be exact, but it should be close enough. See, so you can see it's about 2 points. It's showing that's about 2.5, 2.6, 2.7-ish, 2.9. Yeah, let's see, it won't be again. It'd be hard, it'd be kind of, sometimes it's hard to get the exact value, but um, you can tell it's, you know, it's probably, it's in, it's in the upper twos. But again, you can always zoom in if you want to be more precise and make sure you're hitting that point exactly. Ooh. And see, you can see it's 2.961 exactly. So the answer is D. All right, in 79, we have a particle that moves along the x-axis. The velocity of the particle at time t is given by V of t, and the acceleration of the particle at time t is given by A of t which the following gives the average velocity of the particle from time t equals zero to time t equals a. So average velocity is just a change in position over an interval. So if you're talking about average velocity on some interval from a to b, it would just be the position at point b minus position at point a over b minus a. This is one way of doing it but we were not given this. See, we're given a velocity and acceleration. Another way to think of this is how would you get the position equation or the position function? And you would get that by integrating velocity because the antiderivative of velocity is position or the derivative of position is velocity. So if you set up an integral from zero to eight of V of t dt, and from there, since this is average, remember your C I B minus A, that would just be your eight minus zero. So you're multiplying this whole thing by one eighth because this would leave us with one eighth times S of eight minus S of zero. So looking for the integral that matches this. And then the answer would be B.